So we will have Craig Harrison presenting this to us, and, and he's been with um, Chickmaster, joined Chickmaster about 13 years ago, did a lot of troubleshooting and, and, and time consulting work with customers throughout the globe. Um, and since the merger between James Way and Chickmaster, Incubator Company is being um, utilized with his experience and expertise in designing and implementing new systems to enhance the product lines that we have, not only for the, the Chickmaster Vita, I believe he's involved with some of the James Way enhancement products too. So it comes with a lot of varied experience, both in the field, hands-on in hatcheries, but as well as, as other areas. So um, welcome all here. And with that, I will let Craig Harrison share his screen and take over. And at the end of his comments, I'll reappear and we will um, entertain questions. So Craig, go ahead. Thanks for that, Keith. Much appreciated. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Keith mentioned, I'm Craig Harrison. Um, and today we're going to be focusing on preventative maintenance for the Avida Chickmaster product line, which is our single stage main line incubator. Uh, so before we get started today, I think it's really worth spending a moment just to clarify exactly what we mean uh, for preventative maintenance and what the aim of this is to do. And the aim is fairly simple. We want your machines to run as long as possible, as high as highest quality as possible, so that your production is uh, goes without interruption and your day old chicks that you're putting out the other end are as the highest and most consistent quality that's possible. So what's the benefits of uh, uh, preventative maintenance. First of all, it's important to clarify exactly what we mean by preventative maintenance. When somebody's talking about maintenance on any, any sort of capital equipment, it's going to be largely split into two different types. So first of all, you've got your reactive maintenance. This is akin to your brakes failing on your truck as you're going down the highway or the freeway, um, and you're finding yourself using the emergency lane on the side. Now, your production might be absolutely fine. The load on your back of the truck is absolutely fine. Your driver is going to be a little bit scared and nobody's really hurt, but it's far from an ideal solution. The ideal solution in this scenario would be to regularly change your brakes. And that's what we're talking about today on the incubators. That regular maintenance that can avoid any catastrophic failure or loss of production for your incubators. So proactive maintenance, what's its benefits to you? What's it going to allow you to do? It's going to prolong the life cycle of any of your machines. There's absolutely no reason why an incubator from James or your Chickmaster uh, shouldn't still be running in producing a good quality product for you 30 years after installation. We have machines out there in the industry that have been in for 60, 65 years um, with some upgrades to cosmetics, to the controls and some of the uh, temperature probes. But the core functionality of the machine is unchanged in that time because it's been accurately maintained. By putting in preventative maintenance, this is going to reduce the amount of reactive maintenance that you have to do on the machine. There's countless studies being done on this, and most of them agree that the return on investment of preventative maintenance is at least a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you're spending $10 on a replacement fan belt before it breaks, you're offsetting the cost and you're delaying the cost of replacing that when it does actually break, and you're also reducing the amount of unscheduled downtime that you're going to have on that machine. You're reducing or eliminating those um, out of hours call outs and the danger inherent if, inherent with those of having sole members of staff working late at night on live electrical systems you're giving yourself peace of mind as well so when you're putting eggs into an incubator or chicks into a hatcher you know with confidence that that machine is going to see through that 21 day cycle and give you a product that's saleable and uniform and consistent at the other end the net result of all of these is a higher profit margin for the hatchery especially important when you, if you're in an integrated facility and hatcheries can often be seen as a cost center or a, or a hole where the money disappears rather than a, a, a product producing center. Net result of all of this is obviously a better and more consistent chick quality. So your chicks that are coming out the other end that you're able to give to the farms, give to your customers are going to be more consistent and uniform. Whereas if you're constantly having uh, reactive maintenance done on your incubators, that's going to have a direct impact on that uniformity. The first conversation I always have with customers when it comes to preventative maintenance is around your temperature calibration. Now, this can be extended to humidity calibration and calibration of your valves and dampers if they need it on your incubators as well. But temperature calibration is the biggest one. The reason is a small error in your temperature calibration, just a few tenths of a degree, can have a massive impact on the quality 
of your incubation within that machine. Much like baking a cake, if you bake that cake too quickly, it's going to come out wrong the other end. And equally, if you bake it too slowly at a lower temperature, it's going to have the opposite effect. So the calibration tools that you're going to use for calibration, first of all, you're going to need a half decent calibration box. So through Chickmaster over the last couple of years, we've had two main kits available. The current one you can see in the top right of the screen, which is the RC2. And this is a wireless calibration kit. Functionally, it's exactly the same as the older kit with one big advantage that it's wireless. So you can put the kit on the top of your incubator. You don't need what, uh, mains wires running through your corridor, introducing a trip hazard and electrical in a washdown area. And then you can link that to any Bluetooth enabled tablet. So you can walk up and down the hatcher corridors, leave the kit running and come back to it later. And, and you, have, you can do that with confidence, knowing that nobody's going to accidentally push a trolley into the kit and break it at the time that you need it the most. Slightly older kit at the bottom of this image is the black suitcase. Um, you can have up to eight probes in this kit. And again, it works as similar to the top one, only it has to be sat situated in front of the incubator in order to function. And you need to plug it in as well. So once you've got a solid calibration kit, you're going to want a mercury thermometer as well. Now, the mercury thermometer is, for want of a better word, the Bible within your hatchery, within your site. That's the reference point at which you calibrate your calibration kit. So you've got to be absolutely rock steady that that, cat, that mercury thermometer is accurate to the temperature that you want it. So that's regular testing. So at least every 12 months in a laboratory type settings, so whether it's a water bath or you're sending it to an outside company to be absolutely sure that that's given you the reading you want. Biggest issues we see with mercury thermometers is a split in the mercury. Now that's recoverable. So if your, your mercury thermometer is dropped and it doesn't break, but the mercury splits, you can fix that reasonably readily with a, a hot water bath and a chilled water bath. So get some ice cubes in a glass and try and force all of that mercury into the bottom reservoir or equally with the hot water to get that bubble to um, expel itself in the small bubble at the top of the thermometer as well. So once you've got your calibration kits all set up, how are you going to run through that? First of all is to decide when you're going to calibrate the machines. Regular intervals is the obvious answer. When you've got a brand new incubator, the recommendation I'd always give is to calibrate that temperature at every single use. So our engineers as part of the install are going to do a functional calibration only on that machine. So that is we're going to test the control and make sure we're not getting any crazy readings when we calibrate that temperature. And then the responsibility shifts onto the customer, onto you guys, to ensure that that first calibration is carried out in the first few days. Now, once you've gone through that eight, uh, 17, 18 day first cycle for your setters and you load in the second set of eggs into that machine, I'd recommend it's calibrated again. Nine times out of 10, what you're going to find is that calibration value doesn't change between the first and the second instance if it's done correctly. In that case, you can push the next calibration back by a quarter. So three months. If the, the next time you calibrate it, it's the same value again, you've then got confidence that the calibration values are consistent on that control. And what about once every six months for each incubator is then a, roughly where we'd recommend for, for our controls. On addition to this, anytime you change hardware in your control on the incubator, you wanna be looking to calibrate again. The reason for this is fairly simple. Your calibrated values for any of our PT100 probes on any of our controls, whether it's a Gen 2, a Gemeric, a Rock Control, or a Gen 4, 